Making realistic shadows is one of the most difficult aspects of creating composite and you guys agree with me right but what if you could use subjects original shadow in the new background so today i have a very simple technique for doing just that so without any wasting time let's get started Hi welcome to PS Desire Photoshop and Photography Tutorials. My name is Ishwar. We are back in Photoshop and here we have the subject open with the clean nice shadow which we put forward to use with the new background. However, the first thing we need to do is to separate the subject and by the way if you want to go ahead and download this or you want to follow along with this tutorial, uh, check the links in the description. You I will provide the download link for the image what which i'm using in this tutorial now i'm using the photoshop cc 2023 version we will use the object selection tool you can use any selection tool of your choice but this is the my favorite tool at the moment so the object selection tool is inside the quick selection tool group just select the object selection tool and just make a rectangle around this subject or right now the lasso is selected we can change the mode to a rectangle now let's make a rectangle that's easy now photoshop is going to use its ai and select the make a selection for the subject and now we need to tell photoshop that this area additionally has also been subtracted we need to add that back hold the shift key and drag the rectangle and then add back this area perfect now photoshop didn't do a pretty good job here so we are going to have to go back to the lasso tool and kind of add that so hold the alt key or option key and then simply make a selection around it now i'm not making a perfect selection you can take all the time in the world to do that but we have less time here so we don't want to kill so much time Once we have the selection made, we can just first make a duplicate of the background layer by just dragging it to the new layer icon and then with the selection active, click on the mask button and we can name this subject. Alright. Now this layer, the subject layer, just has the subject extracted with the mask. Next step is simply extracting the shadows. However, have a look at the wall where the shadow is falling or any surface where the shadow is falling it is best and you are very lucky if the surface is clean and smooth but in this case there is a inconsistency or difference in the shadows have a look at this the wall has a line that we need to get rid of before we start extracting the shadow so make a copy of the background layer with the background layer selected press ctrl or command plus j and this is temporary to just remove the inconsistency in the shadows and how do we remove that well we can use the clone stamp tool we can use the spot healing brush we can use healing brush tool or since we are using the latest versions of photoshop the content aware fill has gotten really really good so all we have to do is make a selection around the inconsistency area just like that and then let's go to edit and then content aware fill now it should automatically do the job i don't think i have to make any changes here it's just fine now we can take the time do whatever you want once it's gone now we have a clean surface and you can name this shadow all right now we need to make a selection based on the brightness levels so what if we tell photoshop to make a selection of the dark areas or in other words what if we tell photoshop to make a selection based on the brightness levels that would be perfect for extracting the shadows and to be more specific we can use channels in this case so let's go to channels you can use the rgb channels to make a selection directly based on the brightness levels but if you want to if you want to go deeper let's just browse through the channel so here red channel 
green channel and the blue channel we need to find out which channel has the highest contrast between the shadow and the surrounding areas which channel has the darkest shadows in this case i can see that the channel red have uh, we'll a look at this has the highest contrast between the shadow and the surrounding area so all we have got to do is to hold the control or command click on the thumbnail of the red channel it will make a selection based on that and then let's come back to rgb let's come back to the layers panel just click on layers however at this point the bright areas are selected and the dark areas are not selected when the red channel was selected we need to opposite of that and to get the opposite what we do we simply invert press control plus shift plus i or command plus shift plus i to invert now let's create a solid color adjustment layer based on the selection so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color at the top and choose black as the color hit okay now we don't need the shadow layer anymore we can just simply delete that and rename this as shadow all right you can now turn on the subject and turn off the background and have a look we have the shadow extracted and look the transparency is so well maintained now we can easily add any new patterns or backgrounds let me just show you a couple of examples with the background layer selected we are going to just create the pattern below the shadow so click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose pattern and this is a nice pattern and i like it so let's go ahead and choose some other pattern from here there are lots of patterns and that we can choose from trees grass water lots of them in the presets so let's choose this pattern this is also a nice pattern we can also go with this one all right now we can increase the scale if you want to make it bigger so i want to keep it this big and hit okay perfect look at the shadow it's so good also if you want to clean up the selection it's pretty simple all you got to do is go to subject mask since the shadows already there it will be covering the hair anyway so select the mask of the subject and then take the brush and just paint with black inside of the mask not inside of the layer just here in the mask here you covered this area is fine this area is fine you can take all the time in the world to make the perfect selection again you can take all the time in the world to make the perfect selection but have a look amazing now let's see at the shadow it's very very amazing now let me show you how this would look in completely new background so here we are in explorer we're going to drag a new background and drop it into the photoshop just here and you can adjust it all you want i'm going to make it a little bigger and place it beneath the shadow click it and drag it just place it beneath the shadow have a look it's it's looking nice however in this case we need to make a few adjustments if you look at the shadow mask hold the alt or alt key or option key click on the mask of the shadow it's not very clean because it's taking up the texture from the background from the previous wall so to clean it it's going to be simply pretty simple we can apply curves directly here so with the mask selected let's go to the image adjustments and then curve now we need to make the shadow area even darker we need to make the dark areas darker and to do that take the slider on the left to the right just like so also you can use the hand inside of curves to make it even simpler so have a look at the hand right here just click on the hand and click and drag it down we need to make this area as dark as possible all right it's that's totally dark now now we need to brighten this area shadow area up click and drag it up and bring it back to the normal now we are looking at something once you are satisfied with this just hit okay you can easily clean these areas up by choosing the brush tool black as foreground color you can decrease the flow if you want to so i'm going to decrease it to 20% 
Now let's change the blend mode from normal to overlay. What happens is in that case when you paint it just won't paint on the white areas. It only applies on the areas which are closer to the black. Alright so that would be much safer that way. You won't accidentally paint anywhere. All right, and you can take the time to easily clean this area up. Also, if you want to brighten the shadow or in other words, if you want to make the shadow darker, because if you brighten something inside of the mask, the intensity of that increases. You can change the color to white. With still the overlay blend mode selector, you can paint on the shadow areas to make it even darker, just like so. Hold the Alt key or Option key. Click on the mask to bring everything back in and have a look everything is looking so nice and amazing now of course we need to adjust the subjects according to the new background so with the subject layer selected click on the adjustment layer icon and choose curves now we just need to add a little bit of contrast so with the hand here selected i will just click on the dark area and just bring it down just like that and click on the bright area and bring it up okay now it is also affecting the background if you have a look right here we don't want that we just want to limit it to the subject so simply click on create clipping mask button and there we have it it just limited to the subject now we didn't want to affect the color so simply try changing the blend mode from normal to luminosity that way it won't affect the color when you just work with the curves that's how you can easily use solid color to extract shadows now let me give you one more tip you can also change the color of the shadow by double clicking on the symbol of the adjustment layer of the solid color right there and you can change it to whatever you like a uh, reddish shadow bluish shadow and also if it doesn't look dark enough, you can also do this, hit OK and then change the blend mode from normal to multiply. Because multiply is a blend mode which darkens the color with the background. That will make sure that the shadow is always darkening the image. So we can change it back to black or whatever color you would like, whatever color shadow you would want but anyways i think the original black was fine just giving you a tip in case if you want to change the color of the shadow for composition and you might have to do that in some cases that's it for this tutorial i hope this video helped you and if it did make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe please ring the bell so that you don't miss any future tips tricks or tutorials thank you so much for watching and also i would like to take this moment to thank all my subscribers fans for supporting this channel always thank you so much again for all your support i will see you guys in my next video till then stay tuned and take care